Hello everybody, welcome to another Chem Complete video and we are continuing the aldehydes and ketones lecture today and we are going to take a look at the enamine formation which is similar to the imine formation which we learned about last time but the very last step is going to have some difference. So that is all coming up on the channel right now. Okay, so for aldehydes and ketones, when we talk about the enamine reaction, the enamine, the name itself, the EN, stands for alkene, as in double bond, and then amine is an amine type of functional group, so the nitrogen-based functional group that we are familiar with. So the product is really going to be a combination of both an alkene and an amine together and that's where the name comes from okay so as with all of the reactions we've been learning about in this particular subset of lectures it's going to use an aldehyde or a ketone and it's going to use a secondary amine so when we say that the imine formation that we went over last time utilized a primary amine okay and a primary amine is going to be one where it's an nh2 group so let's say we have ch3 NH2 that would be a primary amine because it's only attached to one other carbon okay a secondary amine is going to result in the enamine formation and that would be something along the lines of if I've got two CH3s right or it can be any other R group and then NH so a lot of times if students are trying to uh, determine whether these are primary or secondary I usually say look at the hydrogen count right if there's two of them it's a primary if there's one of them it's a secondary and then you could also have tertiaries even though we're not talking about this in that in we're not talking about that in this video uh, you could potentially have right this hydrogen replaced with another R group okay so we're going to be focused on the secondary amine reacting with an aldehyde and ketone now, if you haven't seen the imine formation and you're not aware of it, I would encourage you to go back to the prior video that we released on aldehydes and ketones and take a look at that. If you are comfortable with that, the good news is that this reaction is almost identical. It's the very last step that's going to cause a change in the way that the product is actually formed. And it really has to do with a lack of hydrogen on the nitrogen group when we get to that final step. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look here. We're just going to create a basic ketone for the purpose of showing this reaction here. All right, so here's our ketone. We'll do two pentanone. And this is a reaction that is in equilibrium, like many of the aldehyde ketone reactions tend to be. Okay. Now, for this, let's go ahead and we'll utilize that secondary amine that I showed above. So we'll have a dimethylamine. We've got two methyl groups and we've got this. And go back again to the other video if you're not familiar with this, but this is going to be in acidic conditions and the pH is going to be between four and five. And we kind of discussed that last time, but as a brief recap, if the pH is too acidic, it's going to ruin the nitrogen. The nitrogen will behave as a base. It'll pick up the hydrogen in solution, and it'll ruin its ability to behave as a nucleophile. If, on the other hand, you've got the pH above 5, so it's starting to become very weakly acidic to basic, especially if it gets basic, there's not going to be enough acid content to get through the entire reaction because there's going to be a step where we have to protonate an alcohol that's made and turn it into water for a good leaving group. And if we don't have conditions that are at least mid-level in terms of acidity, it's going to ruin that step. We're not going to be able to complete that. Okay, so the first thing that's going to happen here is that the secondary amine is going to come in and attack the carbonyl group, and this will obviously, as usual, open up the pi bond and send that to the oxygen. Okay, so the first step in this reaction is going to be a nucleophilic addition of our amine. Okay, and so we'll have the nitrogen here. Now I'm going to draw this out explicitly, so let's draw the CH3 group over here and then we have another ch3 here okay the hydrogen don't forget that this would have a positive charge for the moment okay and then the oxygen up here 
would currently reside with a formal negative charge. Now, this is where we would get the step that we call the proton transfer. Okay. So the proton transfer, H plus transfer, that's going to simply move the hydrogen here up here uh, internally, kind of restructuring, and that'll become an alcohol and a natural, or a, excuse me, not natural, a neutral amine group, right? So after that, I'm going to end up with this as an alcohol and then I'll just have my nitrogen group that's got the two methyls here. Okay, that'll have its lone pair back and now this next step is going to be the step where the hydrogen up here that we have will interact with this alcohol group. So that's where we're going to go next. Okay, so we can represent this. It really, you know, you can do H3O plus. Uh, you don't have to do that. You could just write H plus. I guess it might depend on what your teacher wants to see. But okay. So by doing that, we are going to turn the alcohol into water. And water is going to make a good leaving group. So that's the goal as far as that step of the mechanism is concerned. Okay, now when the water leaves, the nitrogen is going to temporarily help out by donating a pair of electrons. So we're going to show those electrons right here. Here's the water. So we're going to get water. Okay, the water will leave as a good leaving group. And then the nitrogen, again, this is going to be temporary, is going to form a double bond with that carbon there. Okay, so the result of that is going to be similar to what still what we saw in the imine formation. Okay, and now we've got the water is completely gone, this nitrogen. Okay, now here's where the step's going to differ. At this point, we've got this positive nitrogen, but normally in the imine formation, there's another hydrogen here because it was NH2, right? So one hydrogen is lost in the proton transfer. The other hydrogen is going to be used for the removal of these electrons to send them back to the nitrogen from the hydrogen nitrogen bond. But because we don't have that, what we need to do is we need to have water come in and take a hydrogen from a neighboring carbon. So generally you want to make the more substituted product. And that's just following Zaitsev's rule in the stability of alkenes. Okay, so water could come in and regenerate the acidic portion, right? So we'd call it a catalyst. You get one of these hydrogens. The electrons from that bond are going to go up and form a double bond between the carbon and the other carbon. And then these electrons can be released back to the nitrogen so that it doesn't have a charge. Okay, so what that results in as the final product is that you are going to end up with a carbon-carbon double bond, that's the alkene portion, and then you'll have your nitrogen, right, that's got your CH3 and then your other CH3, or whatever your R groups might be in your case. All right, so that is the full enamine formation reaction. So let's just move my talking head there for a second. You can see we start with the ketone, right? Nucleophile comes in, opens up the carbonyl. The next step, we get the proton transfer occurring so that we can make the alcohol and get the neutral form of the nitrogen. After the proton transfer, the alcohol is going to turn into water from the acid portion. And again, this acid is really coming from what we have under the arrow here, right? This H plus is the source of that acid. And so once we have water, water makes a good leaving group compared to the hydroxyl group. The nitrogen sends the lone pair in to create the double bond. Then you've got this last step here where because there's no hydrogen on the nitrogen for removal, we take a hydrogen from a neighboring carbon. Those electrons go back to form a carbon-carbon double bond. And the pi electrons between the carbon and the nitrogen get sent back to the nitrogen in order to take care of its formal charge. And here we are. We've got the enamine, which is this compound right here, as the final product. Okay, so that covers it.
The last thing I'm obviously going to say is head on over to chemcomplete.com to show your support for the channel. We've got wonderful guides over there if you feel lost, especially in the difficult topics like spectroscopy. We've got full walkthroughs that you can purchase for a very affordable rate. So as always, just viewing my content on the channel helps to support me and allows the channel to grow. We're at 15,000 subscribers now, which is uh, quite an accomplishment. I'm very happy with that. So let's keep pushing it. Uh, share it with your friends if they feel lost in organic chemistry. Like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I will see you guys in the next lecture where we will take a look at a very specialized amine formation called the Wolf-Kishner reaction. I'll see you guys then.